This video is going to talk about the notes for your common factor. Sometimes we like to refer to it as the greatest common factor. And so what happens there is that if you have the same number that goes into each term, then you can factor it out and put it out front of the parentheses. Really what this is, we have to remember that this is just the distributive property in reverse, right? Because we've all practiced the distributive property quite a bit. So now you're just reversing it, undoing it. Right? And so as we do that, what we look at is that for each of these examples, you think, well, what number goes into each term? So what goes into 5x and what goes into 10? And if you think about that, it's like, well, wait a minute. I'm going to pull something out from both of these, reverse my distributive property. I can pull a 5 out from both. And inside your parentheses, you put whatever's left after you pull out the 5. So this has to be a x in order to make it 5x, and this has to be a positive 2 in order to make it a positive 10. And you repeat that for every single one, no matter what you have in front, because this should be your very first step. Sometimes we refer to that as step zero, because you want to find the greatest common factor first. So as we look at example number two, you have a negative 4x plus 6. And when we have this example, you say, okay, well, a 2 goes into a 4x, and a 2 goes into 6. But what I want to do is if I have a negative out front, I'm going to do myself one step better, and I'm going to pull a negative 2 out front. I, don't, I like to pull a negative out front if this very first one is negative. So you think about what's left. That's going to be a positive 2x then, and then this is a negative 3. Because you have a negative 3 times a negative 2, that makes a positive 6. Repeat the same thing for number 3, except in number 3 you have these 12x squared minus 40x. So you kind of have to think about this in two steps. You have your 12 and your negative 40 you have to worry about. You think, okay, what's the biggest number that can come out of that? Because a 2 can come out and a 4 can come out. So you want to pull out the greatest one. And so then we're going to pull a 4 out front of both of those. And you also have to think about your x squared and your x as well. Because x can be pulled out also. And so you're reversing your distributive properties. Say, okay, well, 4x times what number creates 12x squared? And that's going to be a 3 for sure in order to get to 12 and an x in order to get to x squared. Same goes for your negative 40x. I pulled out a 4x, which means this has to have a negative 10. In your fourth example, now you have three terms. So you have to do it three times. What number goes into each? It's very important. It has to go into all three of those terms. And so as you take a look at that, well, it just looks like I have a 2. Because a 2 goes into 6, a 2 goes into 10, and a 2 goes into negative 12. And so whatever's left is what you put in your parentheses. So this is going to be a 3x squared in order to get 6x squared. This is going to be a positive 5x. And this will be a negative 6. And then you are done. For number 5, as you take a look, you have x squared, 10x, and 10. Okay, well, just like number 4 here and number 5, there are x's in two of the terms, but not all three. And so, therefore, you can't pull an x out as we did in question number 3. And so, um, that's why we only pulled out a 2 in question number 4. But in question number 5, it's like, okay, well, now I have to focus on the numbers. I have 10, I have 10, and out in front of that x squared, there's really just a 1. So there's no number that goes into all three of those. So that's why this one is not or non-factorable. Right? And so that's important. Remember, that, that is a possibility that you just can't factor it. Doesn't mean anything's wrong with it. It just means you can't factor. Some people are saying, well, can't you pull a 1 out of all three of those? Well, yeah, 1 goes into everything always. And so we still count that as non-factorable. Moving on, last one, we have question 6. Here I have three terms again. What you notice is that you have an x in all three of those terms. More specifically, I've got an x cubed, an x squared, and an x. An x does come out of all three of those. Then you also have to think about your numbers separately. So you have negative 3, a positive 6, and a negative 12. And again, since I start with a negative, I'm going to pull a negative out. And 3 goes into all three of those numbers. So I have my greatest common factor is a negative 3x. You think about what's left. So, okay, well, negative 3x times what number is going to be equal to negative 3x cubed? And that would just be x squared because you have x times x squared is going to be x cubed. For your second term, same thing. Negative 3 times what number? Um, negative 3x times what number is equal to 
6x squared, and that is going to be a negative now, and it's going to be 2x. So that negative is really important because a negative times a negative gives you a positive, and then you finish off, do the same thing with negative 12x, and this is going to be a positive 4 because now I have a positive 4 times a negative 3 gives me negative 12, and I have this x here to finish that off. So that is your greatest common factor. Um, and remember, you want to do this first always. It should always be your very first step, or some people even say a step zero, because this is how I'll make the rest of your work easier. Because going forward, you're going to take a look at what's inside these parentheses. So whatever is inside these parentheses, you see, is there anything left to factor? Now, in all 60 of these examples, there is not. But in future problems, you might have some more work to do after you've finished finding your greatest common factor.